Hey guys, it's Jess. Welcome back to my channel. So today I just wanted to give you a little tour of our homeschool room. So I'm at my front door right now. So when you walk in, you actually can see our part of our schooling area. I want to make our schooling area more just kind of aesthetically pleasing and not too over the top schooly. So that way when we do have guests, we can, you know, use our dining room area and still feel like it's not super cluttered with a bunch of school. Although um, there isn't really a way of getting around to kind of disguising the things on the left there. But uh, so anyways, let's just give you a little tour. I'll start over here and then I will work my way uh, around. Okay, so through that, that little um, hallway or through that little opening there, that's where our kitchen is. This is where I store what we do every single morning, and that is our prayer journal and our two little Bibles. I have some stickers here. We use a lot of stickers with teaching in the pre-K and K. Um, we have all the pencils and pens and uh, highlighters. And then these are just grippers and erasers for pencils. My daughter still has a hard time learning, knowing how to hold a pencil, and so this kind of shows you how to hold. You hold this with these fingers and you hold the pencil like that. Um, and then it kind of, you graduate to different types of shapes depending on the help that you need. And the reason I have these old tweezers in here because my son, if you've watched my, um, my week, my, our first week of homeschooling, you'll see why, <laughs> but my son likes to dump these out and tweeze and put them back in kind of as a fine motor skill that, oh, it keeps them busy for a little while too. <laughs> That's my laminator, which I can turn off in multiple ways so the kids won't turn it on, so. Um, and then this is something that we do every single day. Um, it's the Melissa and Doug calendar. I really, my kids love doing this. They know kind of what to do. All I do is I help them know what the actual day is and then they actually go, come over here and open the window and then they can feel what the weather is like. Look outside at the trees and the leaves just to determine if it's windy or not. And then also how they both feel. So then, Underneath here, underneath here, I just have extra storage bags, um, pencil pouches, things that I've gotten on clearance from Target and other things, and then our daily binders. So this is my binder. These are our little pointers I got at Dollar Tree. Um, my kids love just pointing out things on even their binders. Um, this is my planner, this is my, my daughter's binder, and my son's, and we do these every single morning. So this has, I can go through, kind of do a walkthrough of what these are. But I'm really glad that we do this every single morning because I know for sure, even if this is the only thing that we do that day, that they're getting a lot done. It's like a fluency binder where like, it has just the main things that we're really working on and it repeats in here every single day. We go over like different things that my son may be working on, my daughter's working on individually. And then, um, so that, yeah. And then I have other binders here. Um, this is our classical conversations binder, my notebook for that, the things that I take to classical conversations for my son, like his busy folder, that binder that he we bring um, with us so he can, you know, not distract my daughter's class, <laughs> um, but he can still sit in on my daughter's class and just do some quiet things. So I can also show you what's in that sometime. And then our all about reading extra stuff. So that's just kind of underneath there. This is a, oh, this is also my, you know, a bendy little power thing which I can turn off back there which turns off the power to the laminator so it's like a built-in kind of safety thing where my kids wouldn't know how to turn the laminator on. So this is kind of our core curriculum this whole thing here um, that we try I try to do every day or at least every week <laughs> so this is our classical conversations little thing these are scrapbook bins from Michaels and this is a scrapbook um, case from Michaels too pretty inexpensive. I got all of these things that you see, I've, you can pretty much bet that I got them for 50% off at least. So um, anyways, so that's Classical Conversations one. This is all about reading. I mean, I've labeled it. So we're doing Saxon, Saxon math. That is the reason for handwriting. We're using that, but I'm just kind of going pretty slow with the reason for handwriting because it's, it is a good curriculum, um, but my daughter just doesn't really like writing very much so I don't want to push her too much because she is only four and a half. <laughs> These are my sons. They're not labeled because I just don't really know what to label them. I mean I could just label them Silas's school but these just have his um, school in here 
and we honestly don't do these every single day so but it is something that if I just want to take the time to you know while my daughter is maybe filling out a worksheet or something like that um, we can go through these things with him and these are just extra things that I can um, swap out in his classical conversations busy binder and then these are more Bible books that we have here. So just uh, lots of Bible dictionary and uh, some other things for Bible. So that's that stack there. And then we talked about what's already here. Up here, you'll see I laminated a picture of the American flag because we do the Pledge of Allegiance every day. And then here are our memory work, our Bible verse memory works. This is like the Charlotte Mason. If you look it up on YouTube, Charlotte Mason's Bible memory work. Um, there's a lot of like tutorials and, and explanations about that. It's a really cool puzzle. We're just learning that about the seven continents and my kids um, like to use this as a little globe but also a puzzle. It's a fun way to have hands-on learning. And then over here, so these are all of my like writing uh, utensils or all of the writing things in here. I have markers here and these are Sharpie markers, twistable pencils. These are just regular colored pens. These are skinny dry erase markers that I give to my kids to use on their fluency binders. These are the fatter ones that I like to use um, for our dry erase board. And then these are twistable crayons. All right, so these drawers here are just of more supplies. This top drawer doesn't open well. So it, it's just kind of, for some reason, just doesn't open very well. But so I put stuff that I actually don't use as often in here, like my chalk pens and sticky notes, little, you know, little page markers and stuff like that, and the pencil sharpener. So I move the stuff that I use most frequently down here. I use scissors a lot. And these are also my kids' scissors, different glues, different tapes, the stapler, and then three-hole punch, which I do use quite often, and a really long ruler. And here I have crayons and markers, as labeled. <laughs> so these are the Color Wonder markers. And then I have crayons in here, and then the smelly, twisty crayons back here. And um, these really do smell a lot, so I don't keep them out and like up there because it, it will seep through and really smell quite a bit. So I keep them enclosed within a drawer because I'm weird like that. So crayons, I do have more crayons than this, but I just don't want to give my kids this crazy amount of crayons because they just get dumped out and you know how that goes so I do rotate the crayons if I realize that we need a certain color but anyways crayons and markers construction paper just simple I really don't need this top thing here but this is just <laughs> construction paper and then coloring books this is actually quite stuffed so the, the most stuffed drawer that I don't know if we really need all these things um, but they are a bunch of different coloring books so it's hard to like throw away a coloring book when you know like half of it's used but half of it's not and do they really like to color and they like to cut but my kids don't really like to color a lot so we don't really probably need that much. Blank paper we actually use quite a bit and then um, just for drawing and also for uh, just like stickers I have all different sizes and then I also have like painting paper too like thicker paper. And then we have lined paper. So lined paper and also lined dry erase boards from Dollar Tree. So these are really nice. They work with magnets on the back because they're magnetic, but then they also have the lines, which I actually really like that they have the pink and blue. And then this is more supplies for me. So this is um, laminating pouches and then the sheet protectors, which these are the best brand. I'll put those in the description box. Really like this. Very nice, thick, and um, the dry erase markers write really well on them. And then I also have like extra things that I'm not using quite yet. The things that I just know that I've already printed out or made, but we're not using quite yet. So underneath all of this here is another one of those 
scrapbooking storage units. This top shelf I just like to keep open. Right now I currently have what I want to laminate this week. So I have my uh, laminating pouches and some, some paper that I printed out. I just bought some things on Teachers Pay Teachers and I just printed them out and I want to add them to our fluency binders. Writing fun. So these are just things like supplementary things, you know, the us born get ready for school wipe cleans or just little workbooks that are all about writing and then we have the same thing with reading um, flashcards some things like that more workbooks i don't use these every single day but i will go through and i will like figure out okay if you know the reason for handwriting is going over how to draw circles. Let's see if one of these notebooks has even more um, circles and, or fun activities about that. This is a binder of stickers. So I am a scrapbooker or I'm a paper crafter, I guess you could call me. But there are a bunch of um, stickers that I actually had from my scrapbooking or paper crafting time. And I just decided to bring them up here because we like to make a lot of things with stickers. So that's the sticker binder, huge old three inch binder. <laughs> These are our counting cubes, um, you know, like the Unifix blocks and then the like pattern, little pattern things. Um, it's just kind of how to do more patterns and things like that. I got this for my son, but my daughter's been using it and liking it, so. And then these are the learning palettes. I got these for, from Usborn. They are just, we actually haven't used them quite as often as I thought. They're a little bit confusing still for my kids. I can review this another time, but this is where I store my learning palettes, so. Okay. So that is like, so okay, that one over there is our pretty much daily like core curriculum, right? And then this is just supplementary things. Uh, up here, real quick, is just a little plate rack that I had for decoration before I made this into my school room and I decided to keep it there because it was really heavy and hard to hang <laughs> and I put I let my kids pick out two little little figurines from Marshall's one day so my daughter obviously chose the unicorn my son the dinosaur and then I keep some really pretty Usborn books up here just to have it be a little bit you know colorful and fun but I can switch them out like if we had guests over I can take down this calendar I can take down those books I could put regular plates up there and make it a little bit more you know not as school roomy I guess you could say over here are even more supplies so I realize I have more supplies than I do curriculum but I think that's kind of how it goes when you're teaching preschool and kindergarten because you have more fun than you actually are sitting down and learning out of a textbook or curriculum so this was just something I had. It's not my most favorite shelf, but it was something I had. All of these things I didn't buy for this room. It's just they're things that I had, except for that thing. I did buy that. So this is where I keep all of our, like, what I like to call it is the Barney bin. If you ever watched Barney growing up, they had a Barney bin or a Barney bag and um, where they could go through and get their gizmos and gadgets and odds and ends and, and decide how they want to craft that day. So I kind of have this be stuff that my kids can just get into. This is where we've made our bookmarks before, um, at, if you watch that video of mine. And so that's just crafty stuff. All right, so the next down is... Um, money and we really haven't gotten into money so we don't use this a whole lot but this is a piggy bank with felt coins in it that is just money I got those for like 50 cents each at the Target dollar spot when all their school supply stuff were 75% off this one here is extra storage bins that I thought I would sometimes use you know just so it's pretty much like an empty ready for being used but nothing's really filling it up right now and this is my paper cutter which i love i had this already for for scrapbooking it's fiskars it's sharp it works really really good even on laminated paper this is all of our paints i keep uh, paint brushes and then just paints and paint things to paint up there this is our last name it starts with f and so i thought it'd be fun to talk about that when i'm really trying to teach my kids this year like what their full name is um and so i thought we could paint our last name this is an empty bin i'm not gonna just be like purposely have that empty forever i i just don't have any need for it to be full right now and then this down here is our velcro and like glue gun and extra extra supplies like where all of the backups are or all of the overflow are so like more pencils more 
grippers, more glue sticks. And these are frames that don't belong there, but I do want to get some printouts, find some pictures online, and then print them out at like Office Depot or something and frame them and put them up. Okay, so now that I have talked about that side, let's move over to this side. This is just a bookshelf that I got actually on clearance at Target. I just have something that's not super schooly up there, <laughs> but still a really great verse to remind myself and to remind my kids about. Um, these are just our books. So this is really honestly my whole library here. Um, I tried to kind of categorize them. So this is like science, history, geography, pretty much all nonfiction books that I don't really necessarily want my kids to get into all the time because they are either expensive, fragile, or just things that I want to make sure that we have for a long time. So they're a little bit higher up on the shelf. These ones are readers. I just have a whole little cubby of things that we can do to supplement our reading. And these are behavior books here. Which um, then back here, I'm using <laughs> I'm using my overflow crayons to store or to make pop up my readers, so that way I can better use the depth of that little cubby there. This level, I have books that my kids can get into, and that I say just go pick out a book on the bookshelf and read it, or you know, and they do. They they like these books a lot, so we have all of those there. And then here are. Puzzles that are like big words matching, matching numbers, Nelson and Doug type of puzzles there that are more educational and the kids don't necessarily gravitate towards, so they're more need my prompting to to play with them. So this is all of my sex and math over here. Um, I just kind of open up the things that we need as we go. So right now we're just using the sex and counting bears and pattern blocks. That's all that we've needed and the hundreds chart. These are the construction letters. I uh, can do a review on these. I think I talked about them a little bit on my Instagram. Yeah, we just we keep them there because they are something that the kids can play with whenever, but, but they are there. Down here, we have all the magnets in for the dry erase board. So in here we have just farm animals, we have regular magnets, we have letter magnets, we also have little shapes, and they will just sit, pull this bin out, and I have a lower dry erase board down here that I just put for my daughter, and then I also have a cookie sheet, so for my son, or vice versa, um, and because mine is up there, so I just put that one kind of down low. You can't really see that it's there from when you walk in the door and when you're in the living room, and so it's kind of just this little hidden, kind of at their size, magnet board that I really like. This bin just has sorting. So something that my son can do while I'm trying to teach my daughter something that's quiet. We'll dump out some buttons or some felt money or whatnot, and then we will put, you know, open this up, and then he'll just sort them. Up here is my big, I think it's 36 by 22. It's not huge but I didn't really want something too big. So what I'm planning on doing actually, is since this is our dining room, I actually wanna get a poster of something of an art that I really like. So like either a landscape of some kind of, or like even a Monet or something like that, some kind of poster that I can roll out and actually put up here and make this like a frame and <laughs> like either with poster putty or even just the magnets and just kind of disguise it instead of having this white blank board. That's something I want to do. I also want to kind of flank it with maybe some something else. I'm not sure. Okay, so from over there, we have the room here. And then over here, I have we have our library bin. So all the books that we just we currently have checked out from the library. And we have our puzzles. So these are most of the kids puzzles that they like to use every single day we have all the boards for the puzzles here and then except this is a box puzzle that i don't know what i'm going to do with yet but we have the boards here and then all in here this is how i do my puzzles so i get really inexpensive pouches that i put my puzzles in most of them are clear so they can see which ones go with what and then also these are great because what i end up doing for like dollar tree puzzles I, just cut out the actual picture of what it's supposed to be on the box, and then I put it in a little pouch here, so that way I don't have all these cardboard boxes, which are a big clutter, and you also don't have boxes that are falling apart. So that's what that looks like. That's just puzzles, and my kids love puzzles. I have my fireplace, and then over here, this is where I keep like my 
um, label maker my records and my label maker tape and just really not not much else in there it's not very full and then up here is just an overflow it's not necessarily school stuff it's just household stuff you know but this drawer here I don't even know if I can open it right now. I need to figure out how to open it, but this has all of their learning games in here. <laughs> so I think it is stuck. I have to figure out how I, I think I have to take this drawer out and then let's figure out how to open it. And then here's just our family games like for adults. So, and without a little knob. It's an antique and that knob keeps falling off. That is that little area where we have our fun games and extra stuff. And then here is our CD player. is our CD player. Sorry about the lighting. Um, this is a, just kind of a modern record player, but it also has a CD player and a radio. And so that definitely isn't too far away from our schoolroom. Hi, hey, Brooklyn. <laughs> um, it's not too far away from our schoolroom, so we can have that on. And then I just keep our CDs and things that we're listening to right in here. I'll put on the classical conversation CDs while the kids are doing a puzzle. The kids will do puzzles either right there on the floor or also on this coffee table. So I do have another closet actually that stores some things. So this is our coat closet and above the coats we do store our play-doh and fun um, kinetic sand up there. So those are just where I store those things because we don't really have another place for those. Yeah. That's pretty much a tour of my school room. Uh, if you have any questions about where I got anything, if you realize through this tour that you're like, oh, I really want you to highlight something or review something, I will definitely, I'll definitely take that into account and I would love to do that. So I hope that you guys have a great day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.